At T-minus four hours, we had the weather briefing. Actually there, uh, we can see the first view of the crew as they exited the Falcon support building that's about a half mile down the road from the launch pad. I love this part where they get a little wave. <laughs> <laughs> they then got into the Teslas, which transported them up, like I said, about a half mile to the launch pad. Um, of course, they're physically fit. They could walk <laughs> it, but we want to make sure they stay cool and comfortable. Uh, so these are the Teslas arriving to the launch pad. And one of my, um, oh, this is a great view here of the crew. Just look at that calm, that patience. Uh, I feel like if that were me, I would just be busting with excitement. Yeah, well, I'm, they are. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then they get out of the Teslas. Uh, and then, you know, one of my favorite moments for whenever we launch astronauts from pad 39A is coming up. Um, it's really, we should come up with it like this astronaut lean yeah. back something where this excitement of seeing their spaceship for the first time on launch day. Of course, they have seen Dragon, they've seen Falcon before. And, and now at this point, we can see crew walking down. There you can see Marcus Want and Alper Izarache. They're giving a thumbs up. They are excited to be on this flight today, and we're excited to have them. All right. So as we saw, uh, right, actually, that view right there, the crew, they are already in their chairs. They're strapped in. Um, they are still, uh, the, the closeout team ex on the exterior, still working through the side hatch closure. Um, but coming up next, we will have, actually, you can see that closeout team there. So this involves closing the hatch, uh, inflating the seal around the hatch to um, make sure that the pressure is good. And then they hold that pressure there to make sure there's no decay or leaking from that side hatch seal. Once we get confirmation that that hatch seal is good, we'll be good to go. Um, after that, uh, we are expecting a um, post ingress brief to occur. Uh, we'll also have crew access arm, which is where these individuals are standing right now. This is in the crew access arm. As the name suggests, this is what allows the crew to access the Dragon capsule side hatch there, as you see. So we're going to retract that away. Uh, then we'll step into propellant loading, terminal count, and obviously the moment that we're all in excitedly anticipating in just under two hours from now, liftoff. So with all of that, let's check in with Ronnie for a countdown status update. Thanks, Kate. I'm Ronnie Farman, a commercial sales manager here at SpaceX. We are currently just about one hour and 57 minutes away from launch, and everything looks good for an on-time liftoff later today. As Kate mentioned, the crew did receive a weather briefing just after T minus four hours. As we approach liftoff, our teams are tracking weather all along the ascent and recovery corridors, ensuring that Falcon 9 is ready for launch and that all possible recovery zones are available if needed. We're currently tracking roughly a 20% chance of weather violation today, and the main constraint we're looking at is ground weather at the launch site. We'll keep you posted throughout the countdown as we continue to monitor those environments. But at pad 39A, which you've got a view of on your screen, our teams are hard at work, Falcon 9 is powered up, engine checkouts were performed overnight, and the pressurization of the gas storage tanks were completed earlier today, around T minus six hours. Just a few minutes ago, Falcon began its final checks for launch, including a communication check with the crew, which should be coming up here shortly. At T minus 45 minutes, our launch director will pull the team for propellant loading. And if we're go, propellant load will begin at T minus 35 minutes. Now, as with all of our launches to the International Space Station, we have an instantaneous launch window, which today is at 4.49 p.m. Eastern. The reason we need a specific time is because Dragon is basically trying to catch up to the ISS, which as we speak is orbiting the Earth at roughly 17,500 miles per hour. That means we have to deliver Dragon to the correct orbit, and we also need to time its trajectory relative to the orbiting laboratory so that they are both in the same place in orbit at the same time. A precise liftoff is crucial for achieving that timely, rende timely rendezvous between Dragon and the space station. If, of course, for any reason we are not able to launch today, our next opportunity will be at 4 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. That's the latest update for now, and I'll check, again, check in again as we get closer to liftoff. Back to you, Kate. Thanks, Ronnie. Speaking of liftoff, let's take a closer look at the vehicles that will be taking the AX-3 crew to the International Space Station today. At the very top of the vehicle with, uh, is there at our Dragon spacecraft. This is where the crew is currently sitting and will spend their 32-hour flight to the International Space Station. This marks our 12th overall human spaceflight mission in the last four years, and in this time, Dragon has flown 38 people to orbit and back, 
plus the additional four NASA Crew-7 members that are still on orbit at the space station. Dragon and the AX-3 crew will be delivered to orbit today by the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, which provides 1.7 million pounds of thrust uh, there on its first stage thanks to uh, the nine Merlin M1D engines. Named after the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars, the number nine refers to the nine Merlin engines that power Falcon 9's first stage. Since taking flight in 2010, our Falcon 9 rocket has made 298 flights and delivered all sorts of payloads to orbit. After today's launch, the first stage will return to SpaceX's landing zone one at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, which you see a live view of that there on the right hand side of your screen. It's about nine miles as the crow flies from pad 39A. Fun fact, this is actually the same landing zone where Falcon 9 made its first successful landing attempt back in 2015. So if it looks familiar, that's why. <laughs> Since then, we have continued to recover and refly our first stage boosters, performing 235 repeat flights in total. Below the Dragon is the Falcon 9 second stage. Its job today is to secure Dragon's entry into low Earth orbit before separating, leaving Dragon to continue its journey to the space station on its own thrusters. Reusability is the key to making spaceflight more routine and ultimately what will enable humans to become multiplanetary. Both the first stage booster and the Dragon spacecraft that you see there will be uh, that are flying today, they're both flight proven. The first stage has supported four previous missions, while this Dragon capsule has supported two previous missions. That's right, Kate. In fact, the AX-2 crew that flew in May 2023 launched on this same first stage Dragon booster. SpaceX, back with you with some good news. Good side hatch leak check. Copy off. Thanks, Jake. All right, good news there. We yeah. got confirmation that that leak check was good. So the side hatch is now closed Excellent. and it will remain closed until the crew comes back to Earth uh, in about two weeks. Fantastic. All right, well, still looking at that view there. Um, as we mentioned, the AX-2 crew that flew in May 2023 launched on this exact same booster and flew the second flight of this Dragon capsule. So maybe when we get some views inside the cabin, we'll get to see an AX-2 mission patch in there later. <laughs> as for the maiden flight, that was with NASA's Crew-4. And as the first crew to fly in this capsule, they had the honor of naming it, which is pretty cool because once a spacecraft is named, it will continue to go by that name for all future flights. Anyway, they chose the name Freedom. Crew-4 commander Chel Lindgren said that the name was chosen because it celebrates a fundamental human right and the industry and innovation that emanate from the unencumbered human spirit. The name also honors Freedom 7, which of course is the space capsule used by Alan Shepard's Mercury Redstone 3, the first U.S. human spaceflight mission, which took place on May 5th, 1961. Yeah, Kate, I love that. On that note, right, with Alper on board, Turkey A is taking their first step into human spaceflight on a capsule named after one that first carried the United States into space. It feels like such a poignant underscore to this historic event for the people of Turkey. Eh? Absolutely. Now, speaking of Alper, let's talk about the training and th that he and all the rest of the AX3 crew have completed in order to be prepared for this mission. As you might imagine, astronaut training is extensive from the training that is specific to each crew member's role to learning SpaceX protocols, ISS systems, and preparing for the science and outreach activities that they'll be conducting in space, private astronaut training is rigorous. Altogether, the AX-3 crew spent about 35 days training inside Dragon. To prepare them for flight, our teams at SpaceX spent the last several months teaching the crew about orbital mechanics and how to live in microgravity. We also used our Dragon training capsules to run simulations of ascent, ISS rendezvous, and reentry. The training program includes nearly 100 different lessons covering all aspects of the flight. The team also spent time at the launch pad in our suit up room and working through emergency procedures that would be necessary in the unlikely event of a pad abort scenario. 